Good morning, guys. Happy Wednesday. Yeah, because tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Happy Wednesday, y'all. So good morning. Did I say good morning? Yeah, good morning. I'm still in my night getup, as you guys can see. Um, my goal for the rest of this year, or yeah, my goal and also a, a what do I want to word this as? Just a, a heart decision, H-E-A-R-T, not hard, but heart decision that I made maybe a week ago. And I said, for the last 40 days of the year, why I chose 40, I don't know. It's just a, a number that popped in my heart. But I said, in the last 40 days of the year, it's going to be 40 days of self-love, right? That's what I, I said it was going to be. And I put it in my calendar. And I knew today, the 22nd, I had to look at my phone to see the date, that I was going to start my 40 days of self-love, right? And when I say self-love, I don't mean self-care. So it wasn't 40 days of me getting my nails done and getting a facial and doing all these things. More so 40 days for me to commune with God and hear what he's saying, for him to work on my heart posture, my confidence, my calling, my purpose, whatever it is that needs rewiring within me. It was going to be 40 days of self-love. And I called it 40 days of self-love because regardless of where I am in this journey or in this walk, I want to love every part of myself as I go through this journey called life, right? And I'm doing it with God. So I know it's going to be good. There's going to be peace in all situations. It may be chaotic, at times, but his peace that surpasses all understanding will still be with me. Like his supernatural confidence that he can bestow upon me, supernatural faith, you know, supernatural encouragement, just, you know, God is a, a supernatural God, right? He adds his super to our natural and he creates things that we could never do on our own because he's God. So it was just 40 days of self-love, like loving myself in every capacity. When it comes to my job, my purpose, my relationships, my uh, physical appearance, looks, um, whatever you can think of that requires self-love, confidence, right? And I was just like, for 40 days, this is what I'm going to do. It's going to be 40 days of self-love. But as I was sitting yesterday my heart posture changed, right? And instead of it being 40 days of self-love, it's a journey and a, a walk that I felt led to share with you guys as well, because this is not about me, right? So I wanted to take self out of it and just make it 40 days of love, right? And this 40 days of love is going to consist of whatever God puts on my heart personally, to share with you guys, right? And it's similar to my calling and what I do on this platform right now. I'm a dreamer. <laughs> if you're new, welcome. Um, I pray that God sent you here and you're not sent by your own accord, okay? Because you never hear me say, click, share, subscribe, join this ministry, huh? Uh -uh. Don't join bold for Christ if God ain't lead you here because I'm not for everybody. I'm not connected to everybody. And if you really read some of these comments, sometimes you can see that I'm not for everybody, but people still wander their little happy self over here, trying to talk crazy in the comments and just do the most. And I'm like, bruh, I'm not changing who I am. If I'm not for you, go find a ministry that is, right? And it's just that simple. I love you, but go find someone that is, right? I even had yesterday, this girl put in the comments and she can't, she can comment, but it's never going to pop up on my YouTube again <laughs> because she's a hidden user now. Um, I didn't block her, but she's a hidden user because I'm not for everybody. So if you don't agree with something that I'm saying, or if it irks you not agree, because everything, everything that I speak about when it comes to prophecy and releasing what God gives me, it's never going to contradict the word of God, Right. Um, as far as Christmas, everybody has their personal opinions on 
Christmas being pagan or whatever, and you're entitled to your own opinion, right? But here on Vote for Christ, I personally, I celebrate Christmas and I don't celebrate it for presents and Christmas trees. I celebrate it as the birth of Jesus, even though we technically don't know the day or the hour or whatever the case may be that Jesus was born. Like it's not, there's no date in the Bible. So that's going to always be a contradiction. But the point is that he was born and he died for our sins. And that's all that matters to me. And if I can celebrate him on Christmas, I'm going to do it. I celebrate him every day of the year. But if this day of the year, for some people, we set it aside to just celebrate Jesus and eat together and fellowship, or even if you're alone on Thanksgiving, I'm not going to my family's house on Thanksgiving. I'll be right here. I'm cooking a small dinner for myself. I have family in Austin. I could have flown home. Didn't feel led to. I'm good. Okay. I'm what you call an introvert extrovert. Okay. I got a little bit of both in me, but I'm totally good with being by myself. I'm never by myself. I'm always with the Lord. But anyway, I celebrate Christmas and I celebrate, I call it Christ must. So to me, I'm like, Christ is a must, right? And I share that with you guys. And this girl uh, commented and she's like, God, God bless you. You're leading people astray. It's a pagan holiday. Read your word. And I'm just like, girl, shut, shut it, shut it. If you don't celebrate Christmas, it's okay. Allow people to do what they do. Like no one, no one cares how you, how you feel. And that's put, putting it bluntly, but that's the reality. No one cares. So I hid user from channel so she can comment. I'm never going to see her comments because I'm like, go find a platform that you feel the person isn't leading God's people astray. <laughs> like if me celebrating Jesus on Christmas is leading people astray, honey, I'm not for you. Go find a platform that is. I don't tell anybody to celebrate Christmas. If you don't celebrate Christmas, don't. I don't buy gifts and all that stuff on Christmas. That's not what it's about to me. So whether pagan or not, your birthday is a pagan holiday. Who in the Bible was having um birthday celebrated besides Jesus Christ? Okay, the people was traveling to see the birth of Jesus. But who else was up there like having birthday parties in the Bible? Nobody. So your birthday is a pagan holiday. My birthday is a pagan holiday. We can look at that as a pagan holiday too, but that's not the point. I celebrate my, my birth on my birthday. God brought me here for a reason, right? I was born even though my mom's tubes were tied. So I celebrate my birthday. I don't have to do anything extravagant, but I thank God for another year. I may go out to dinner or something uh, but technically, it's a pagan holiday. Like nobody was up there having birthday parties in scripture with balloons and um, bounce houses and stuff. Like it just wasn't a thing. The only birthday that was literally celebrated was Jesus. So I'm like all the back and forth about Christmas being a pagan holiday. I'm just like, bruh, go, go somewhere. Just not here. Okay, so you don't have to agree with me, but don't, I don't care what you feel about Christmas. If you feel it's pagan, don't celebrate it, right? No one cares. So please just refrain from putting how you feel, oh, you're leading people. Okay, because you're you're gonna be one of the people that's blocked. And I'm not saying you have to agree with me. Let's agree to disagree. As long as I'm not saying anything or prophesying something that's contradicting scripture and you guys hear me in every word, I got a verse to back it up, okay? In every prophetic release, you can go to the Bible. And if you read spiritually and listen spiritually, you'll, you'll get exactly what was prophesied from scripture. I will never contradict the word of God. So I'm not leading people astray. If you don't celebrate Christmas, cool. Cool. Christ is a must for me. So that's how I look at Christmas. Okay, but anyways, this 40 days of self-love went from being 40 days of self-love to 40 days of love. And I just felt a need to share this journey with you guys for the next 40 days. Um, as of today, we have 40 days left of the year, including today. So we're in the last 40 days of the year. And again, I can't say why I chose 40. I just did. It's just a number that just dropped in my spirit. And I was like, 40 days of self-love 
but now it's 40 days of love. So during this 40 days, I plan to be on every single day until the last day of the year, giving you guys whatever God gives me, whether it is a dream or an encouraging word, because my, my goal, I wake up and start my day with Jesus every morning. But for the last 40 days, it's really intentional for me. Okay, it's an intentional waking up and just sitting and hearing. Even though I do this every day, it may be, you know, some days may be longer than others, but this time I'm being intentional about my slow, starting my morning slow, right? I like to get up and work out and do the things, but I'm being intentional about just having a slow morning and starting it with God and really seeing what he has to say for the last 40 days of this year, and sharing that with you guys. So it's 40 days of love. And then whatever he gives me for that morning or that day is what I'm going to share with you guys. So I pray that these 40 days bless your life because this is the last 40 days of the year. Yesterday I said, this is the first last 40 days of the year. <laughs> okay, however you wanna take it, it's the last 40 days of the year. And I said the first last 40 days of the year. So as we transition into 2024, I feel like there's so much transition taking place before the transition into a new year. And I want to be able to hear what God is saying and share that with you guys, because whatever he gives me is never just for me. It's never just about you. There's always someone that's in the same season as you, someone that's going through the same things. And we're here to be a light to others, to encourage others. So whether it's through a dream, I dream almost every single night, multiple times. So whether it's a dream, an encouraging word, or both that the Lord wants me to release to you guys on that day, that's what I'm going to give. Some may be long words, some may be short words. I'm just letting the Holy Spirit flow throughout this last 40 days of the year, because I want to be able to hear what the Lord is saying. I want my heart posture to be focused on what he's, what he's doing and where he's leading me. Right. And I hope that you guys want the same for yourself. And uh, when it comes to just the, the 40 days in general, like so much in scripture happened in 40 days and 40 nights. And that's basically what we have left of this year is 40 days and 40 nights, right? We know that in Genesis, the Lord was troubled by wickedness of this world. So he planned to destroy it and wipe it out and rain fell upon the earth for what? 40 days and 40 nights. So there was a cleansing of darkness of sin that took place during this 40 days and 40 nights, right? We see that later, Moses led the Israelites out of Egypt toward the promised land. And God called him to the top of Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights without eating bread or drinking. So he was fasting. And there is where God gave Moses his covenant. A covenant is a promise, an agreement, the 10 commandments so that they could live in alignment with God's word with the Lord, right? So again, that's 40 days and 40 nights. So we see that a cleansing took place in Genesis, a cleansing of darkness, a wiping away, a washing away. We see that in um, Exodus 34, verse 28, that Moses was called to the top of the mount for 40 days and 40 nights and given God's promise, his covenant, his commandments, right? So there, there was communing with God during this time. There was new revelation during this time, right? Um, when God had Moses send out spies into the land so that they can explore, right? And see what was going on. They spent 40 days and 40 nights scouting the land and then reported all that they had found during this time, right? So again, there was a revealing that took place, right? There was things that were previously unknown that during this 40 day and 40 night period, they became known about what was going on, right? We know that in the story of David and Goliath, that the people endured 40 days of taunting from Goliath before David stepped up and shut it down, okay? You can read that in 1 Samuel um, chapter 17, 
verse 16, right? So a lot happened in 40 days and 40 nights. Like a lot took place. And again, I don't know why I chose 40 days and 40 nights for this time frame, but God knows. And as you can see in scripture, there's so many more things that happen in 40 days and 40 nights, even Jesus fasting, right? For 40 days and 40 nights. After his fast, he was hungry. He was tempted by Satan and he passed the test, of course, right? So there was that that took place, right? There was a, a test given and a test passed, right? So, so much, so much has happened during the 40 day and 40 night period in the Bible. So I believe in my heart that so much is going to happen during this 40 days and 40 nights time frame, And I'm excited to see what that is. Okay. So without further ado, let's get into it. And I know this word is going to be a little bit longer than most because I'm explaining um, what God has me doing during this time. Um, and it's okay. Um, slow morning. So I'm taking my time. You'll also see I'm going to try my hardest not to rush myself when it comes to releasing words and talking to you guys because I really just want to enjoy this journey in the last 40 days. And I should never feel rushed anyway. And you guys don't rush me. It's more so within myself. I'm like, okay, just get it out, say it. But the Lord Jesus walked everywhere in scripture and he accomplished more than we could ever accomplish running or driving fast, right? He walked everywhere. So throughout this 40 days and 40 nights, I'm going to walk with you guys. And I Hope that you guys walk with me if you feel led. If you don't feel led, then don't walk with me, right? Just let God lead you. But this is a 40 day and 40 night. Just walk, a walk with Jesus and just seeing what he unfolds during this time. Okay, so the first thing the Lord shared with me this morning was from Matthew chapter 20. And I'm going to start at verse one and finish off at verse 16. And I'm also going to share a dream with you, but what he was sharing with me, my face is itching, Holy Spirit. What he was sharing with me and these sets of scriptures, and many of you know the story about the, um, it's a parable about what the kingdom of heaven is like. And it's talking about the employer and then the people that he's employing to work for him, right? Or the master of the house who goes out and he gathers these people to come work for him and so forth. Many know the parable, but I'm gonna give it to you guys how the Lord gave it to me. Um, but first, before I even explain or read from Matthew chapter 20, and I'm reading from the ESV. Yeah, the ESV version, but I'm also gonna hit a bunch of different other versions of scripture throughout this word. Um, but what the Lord was showing me as I was reading these sets of scriptures is that the parable that he gave, he was actually comparing that parable to the Lord God, right? <laughs> to the Lord God and how he operates with us, with his children. We are his workers that he's went out to recruit and work for the kingdom, right? And as we're working for God, it's so easy for us to um, become discouraged because we're looking at the things that God has us doing. And then we're, we're looking at how long it seems to get to the promise, to get to this place that he's promised us to, to get the reward. We're looking at other people's lives and we're like, okay, Lord, they started their journey with you after me, but yet they seem to be ahead of me and so forth. Or Lord, you have me standing for this person. And you're saying, you're going to bring them back to you. Like you're going to bring them back to salvation, draw them back to you. They'll be walking in your will, but it's been a long time and they're taking forever. Meanwhile, I'm sitting here working, doing what you're telling me to do. And you still have me standing in the gap for this person, but they seem to be taking forever. And what the Lord is saying is that it doesn't matter who gets there first or who gets there last. The end result is for them to get there. And there is to God right? It's in his dwelling place. It's for them to become one with him, right? That's the end result is just to get there. It doesn't matter who comes first or last. The last shall be first and the first shall be last. <clears throat> but the whole point is for them to get there, to get on one accord with God, 
to abide in him, to rest in him. That is the whole point. But it's so easy for us, again, to get discouraged by what we see. And we're thinking since we've been working so hard in our purpose and in our calling and sowing and doing for other people that we should be further along. But that's not how God works. His timing is not our timing. And at the end of the day, the end reward for all of those who begin to work for God, who who walks in their purpose, who connects to him, who gives their life to him, the end result is the same. It's eternal life in heaven with our father. That's the end result. The end result is not for you to stand for a prodigal just so you can be married and have children and you have your husband or your wife back. No, the end result is for that person to become one with the bridegroom, which is the Lord God, our first husband. That is the whole point. This whole journey is about leading people to salvation. God is trying to get as many people on board with him as possible. And Satan is trying to get as many people on board with him as possible. So God will use his workers, that's me, that's you, to go out and be about his father's business. The Lord Jesus is like, you know, go ahead, do what my father needs you to do because we need you to pull all of these people back on on this side. And don't get me wrong, we're not here to save these people. These people, (laughs) Jesus did that on the cross, okay? But we're here to lead people back to the heart of God. Because at the end of the day, our hope should be the same as the Lord God's hope. And that's the hope that no one perishes. That everyone has eternal life with him. Our, Our hope should be the same you should be at a point that if you are standing for a husband or for a wife, you're like, Lord, I'm I'm going to keep standing for them. It don't matter if you bring them back to me or not. As long as they come back to you and their soul is saved and they're going to heaven after this, this life, that's all that matters. Let your will be done, Lord. And if you're not to that point and your only focus is, I want this person to be back with me, then you may need to do a heart check and look at yourself and look at your heart. Like, where is your heart positioned? What has your heart? And is it truly Jesus that has your heart? So let me read these um, verses to you guys because it's going to just connect and make so much more sense. It says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house. The Lord God, the Lord Jesus is the master of the house, right? The Lord Jesus, the Lord God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, they are the house. Okay, they are the house. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Workers. We are the workers that the Lord Jesus hires to work for him, right? To do to do his work. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them, he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. Whatever is right, I will give you. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour. In the ninth hour, he did the same thing. So this master of the house, just like God, went out early morning and all throughout the day, looking for workers and pulling them in, like, you know, bringing them to work for him all day long. That is our father to the T, okay? About the 11th hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? This is the last time he went out. The 11th hour is the the last hour before a new day right? It's the end. It's that that last moment (laughs) before a transition takes place. And we know that God is an 11th hour miracle worker, okay? Which is what he's doing for many in this hour when it comes to the, the covenants, the promises that he's made with you. They said to him, because no one has hired us, he said to them, you go into the vineyard too, And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to this foreman, call the laborers and pay them wages, beginning with the last 
up to the first. And when those hired about the 11th hour came, each of them received a denarius. When those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house. How many of y'all have been grumbling at the, the master of the house, the Lord God, like, Lord, I've been doing work for you this whole time. How is this person ahead of me? How are they still out doing this, that, and the third, okay? Saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day. Y'all better catch this word. And the scorching heat. How many of y'all feel like y'all have a burden, okay, from carrying so much? Like this, this walk, has been hard, it's been heavy, this cross has been heavy, the heat has been turned up, and you like, Lord, uh, I'm standing for them. They just coming, they just gonna come in the mix and they just gonna be blessed, okay? The last shall be first and the first shall be last. At the end of the day, God is gonna do what's right, y'all. And I pray that y'all y'all are listening to this on a spiritual level. So I'm going to read this verse one more time. This, this is the this is what the workers are saying. These last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat, okay? A lot of prodigals, and again, a prodigal is not your husband or your wife. It's somebody that walked outside of the will of God that chooses wasteful living over the will of God. A lot of these prodigals are coming back in the 11th hour, okay? And when they come back, that door of blessing from God is waiting for them. God is no respecter of person. At the end of the day, the, the denarius that we get paid, okay, is eternal life. It's walking with God and having eternal life with him. That is the goal. He's no respecter of person, the last shall be first and the first shall be last. And in this 11th month, in this 11th hour, we can look at this 11th month as the 11th hour. It's the last month before the, the last month of the year. It's the last before the last, okay? In this 11th hour, many prodigals are coming back to God and they're getting their reward that's due, okay? Does it mean that life is gonna be easy and that they'll never be um, reprimanded or disciplined for their action. That's not what it means. But a lot of them are coming home. Home is to Jesus. He is the house. He is the home. So they're coming back. It doesn't matter that you've been there first. God knows that you bared a, a heavy burden. It's been hot up in here, okay? It's been hot. This, this purpose is calling. It's been exhausting at times. But at the end of the day, it's about saving souls. And a lot of prodigals are returning in this 11th hour, okay? But he replied to one of them, friend, friend, what does God call us? His friend, like that. this, this whole parable, just listen spiritually, y'all, because I'd be getting excited. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Translation, God is doing you no wrong. Did you not tell him that he could use you? Okay, when you say God use me, you are gonna feel real used, okay? Did he not? But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? You agreed to this walk in this journey. You ain't know what you was agreeing to, but whatever the outcome of this walk is, it's going to be good. You may look at it as it not being fair because someone who came after you has received, you know, the same thing that you've worked for longer. It's not about the time. It's not about the time frame that you've stood in the gap for people. At the end of the day, the pay is the same, and that's to have eternal life with God. <clears throat> take what belongs to you and go. I choose, I choose 
to give to this last worker as I give to you. God is the one that chooses. He has the final say. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Y'all better hear this as God speaking to you. Is he not allowed to do what he wants with all that belongs to him? Because everything under the sun belongs to God, okay? Or do you begrudge my generosity? To begrudge means to envy, to resent. He's asking, do you resent how generous he's been to you and to this person? Because at the end of the day, the workers that started first and the workers that started after, they all work together on the exact same thing. So they accomplish this project, this task together. Together. Yeah, one person may have bared a heavier weight than the other, but at the end of the day, they were working on the same thing together. And that's that's what we do when we stand in the gap with other people and they finally come over. Because when God makes a promise to you to restore something or he tells you stand in the gap, I'm going to, to bring this person to salvation. Like I'm going to, to change the hearts of this these people. He means exactly that. But the time frame is not on our time frame. But at the end of the day, these hearts are being changed and these prodigals are returning for one common denominator and that's God. That's to be a part of his kingdom. That's to work for him and to walk in purpose. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first and the first shall be last. So those are the sets of scriptures that the Lord um, led me to this morning and just began to expound on how the, the parable is really about him and us. <laughs> like he's the master of the house. We're the workers. He recruits us all day long. Some may come the first time, some the second time, some the third time. Some may not even come until the end. Okay. Until it's almost too late, but we all will get the same reward and that's eternal life in Christ, eternal life with our father. We all get paid the same. Yes. God knows you've been in this for a long time, but guess what? It's somebody that's been standing longer than you. It's someone that's been standing longer than you, that's been walking in their purpose longer than you, that's been doing all the things longer than you, and they still have a humble heart. They're not over here like, girl, you only been standing for two years for your family, for that husband, for these people. I've been standing and in this game with the Lord God. <laughs> Look, I've been standing and working in this, um, working in purpose, walking in purpose for a long time. They're like, I've been in this game. I'm an OG. I've been in this thing for a long time, but their heart posture is still at a humble place. It's still at the Lord's feet. When you begin to compare, well, Lord, I've been doing this this whole time and look where I am and they just get to come in and this is what they get. It's not up to you. Just like this master of the house said, he gives what's right. God is righteous. He's never going to be unfair. He's a just God. But it doesn't matter who comes after or who comes before. The end result is the same. He know you, you've been in the heat. It's been heavy. But at the end of the day, we should be thanking him for prodigal family members, husbands, wives, um, aunts, uncle, whoever. We should be thanking him for prodigals returning to him versus looking at it as your reward should be bigger because you've stood longer or because you've walked in purpose longer, because you've coached this person and that person. You've sown over here and did what the Lord told you to do with first fruits. At the end of the day, None of that matters. God is thankful that you were obedient and that you stood in the gap for these people, but the, the end result is for them to come to salvation. And many prodigals are returning in this 11th hour. And you're a lot of you are expecting the prodigals to return and them to immediately go through a judgment process. That's going to be judge. It's going to be judgment for some, but not everybody's going to go through this harsh judgment that you think in your head they're going to go through because they walked away from your marriage. Child, please, if they're going to go through a judgment, they're going to go through it because they walked away from their marriage to Christ. They were unfaithful to Christ. 
the Lord calls people prostitutes in Bible, in the in scripture that choose to walk outside of his will. And they choose to, to make love to the world, so to speak, to sleep with the world instead of having intimacy with him. He refers to them as a part of whoredom. And that's in the KJV, a part of whoredom. Translation, whores, in a sense, like prostitutes. Because your, your first husband is him. When you step outside of that marriage and you're just giving your body up to the world, you're prostituting yourself. So the end result is to get everybody to eternal life with God. But many of you guys are going to see um, prodigals returning in the 11th hour. And they are not going to face a judgment like you think. They're going to walk right into their calling, into their purpose, into what God has for them. Many that have husbands and wives returning, you're walking into your your next level of purpose and calling with the Lord, because there's a difference. You have your individual callings and purpose, right? But when you come together with that significant other, God has work for you guys to do as one, to becoming one, right? So many of them are coming back and you guys are just going to walk into the next. It's not them facing this harsh judgment that you just want to see them go downhill. A lot of them will, they will face discipline for their actions. We all face discipline for our actions, but thank God for his generosity that we don't have to face discipline for everything that we do. But he picks and he chooses how he wants to discipline us, when he wants to discipline us. And the discipline may not come for another 20 years. It's totally up to him. But your main focus should be at least he called me to work for him. I've been in his vineyard this whole time. Look at it as you have more experience than the people who came after because you've been there longer. The longer you do something, the better at it you get, okay? <clears throat> so there's, there's a blessing even being there first and working longer. <clears throat> You're ahead of the game. But the workers didn't even see it that way. Like, shouldn't we get more? We was here first. It's not about who gets more or who gets less. When you get God, <laughs> like <laughs> it, that getting him is priceless. But prepare many of you guys for just the returns, the prodigal returns and praise God for what he's doing in this hour with prodigals returning. Because we want that. Like Satan is recruiting, but God is recruiting. We want to take all the ones that Satan has recruited and stripped them away and moved them over to the Lord God, that is the end result that we want. We have to take the focus off of us. Oh, well, I've been doing this long, Lord, so I should be here and there. No, you're exactly where God wants you to be in this 11th hour. But in this 11th month, which is the 11th hour, because <laughs> the last month is December, we only have less than two weeks until we're in that last month. So go ahead and shoot those 11th hour, 11th month prayers up to the Lord, because there's going to be a lot of transition within this 11th month, but within these last 40 days of the year, transition, cleansing, covenants being given, agreements being made, like testing. They're just like in scripture. In 40 days and 40 nights, so many different things happened. There was so much transition and change taking place. That is what's happening right now in this hour. And I'm not even going, I don't even feel led to go over the dream. So I'll put that in a separate word. I'm just going to leave it right here. Um, yeah, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to leave it right here. Um, and the other, the dream I'll give to you guys in a separate word. But that is the word for today, guys. I love you. I pray that this blesses you. Um, I'll be talking to you every day for the next 40 days and 40 nights, okay? And no, I won't be on twice a day. Well, unless God calls me to be on twice a day, but you will see me every day. Um, Lord's willing, and I know he is, <laughs> um, for the next 40 days as I take this journey of love with Jesus and bring you guys along with me. So I love you guys. I received the prayer request. If you don't receive a response from me, um, just know I'm working through the prayer request and you will be covered in prayer. I'm trying to get to it as best 
as I can and as quickly as I can. Um, but I'm getting to them. But I love you guys. I hope you have a great Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Um, and yeah, we'll talk soon, y'all. Bye.